Are the words that Jesus spoke on the cross, the one, two word of the seven words that he spoke on the cross, which is mentioned John 19, 28. Everyone knows what it means to be thirsty. Surely you know too. You have gone through this experience as well. It is now very hot here in Taminado. It is now in the mid-30s, in Celsius degrees, and we need to drink at least three liters of water per day if not more, and think if you are walking in this heat or even maybe jogging, you need to drink much more. I remember when I was wrestling in my youth, I was, after, after every fight, I was so exhausted that uh, only water I had to have first before I could do anything else. My name is Vincenzo. I live here since the last 26 years in Taminado. I was asked by Brother Alfred to say something about the seven words that Jesus spoke on the cross. I choose, I choose to say the words about I thirst because of the long journey through the Via Dolorosa, which means the path of sufferings. He was, he, was carrying, he was carrying the cross and then he was also nailed on it. He knew he was going to die. He was God, but he became fully human and suffered all the agony from being arrested up to hanging on the cross. The words, I thirst, revealed three things. First, Jesus suffered physically. Second, Jesus fulfilled the scripture. And thirdly, Jesus provided for our thirst. First, the physical suffering. Jesus felt that death is coming soon. His body was drained of all the energy. His tongue was stuck to the roof of his mouth. His lips were burning. He was utterly tormented. He was extremely dehydrated. He was suffering so much on our behalf. We can hear him crying, crying for us to God. So now we come to the second one, which is the fulfilling of the scripture. In John 19.28 is written, after this, Jesus, knowing that all was now finished, said to fulfill the scripture, I thirst. And in Psalm 22, 1, it says, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? It's also one of the revelations in the scriptures. In Psalm 22, 14 and 15, we can read, I am poured out like water, and all my bones are out of joints. My heart, my heart is like wax. It is melted within my breast. My strength is dried up like a pot's hair, and my tongue sticks to my jaws. You lay me in the dust of death. So Jesus, after crying, I thirst, received sour wine to drink. With this Psalm 69 was fulfilled, which says, They gave me poison for food, and for my thirst, they gave me sour wine to drink. That means that the scripture already foretold about Jesus and the thirst. But Jesus, he didn't have just the physical thirst, but also the spiritual thirst. He had the thirst to be near to God, to his Father, 
always and all the time that was more important for him. And uh, God, but God, he already planned this in our head because he gave his only and begotten son for us, for our sins. The thirst that he had on the cross was the thirst to die for our sins. That was the real thirst. Not the, the thirst because he needed the water, but because he was hanged on the cross, nailed on the cross because of our sins. That was the thirst. That was the thirst that he went through, that we didn't have to do. He sacrificed, God sacrificed his son for our deliverance. Jesus was brought like a lamb to be slaughtered. It's also foretold in the Bible. Jesus was the ultimate redemption for our sins. The two words, I thirst, brings us to the third revelation, and which is Jesus provided for us. Since Adam and Eve, the people have sinned all over the world, the whole time through the history. The consequences of that is pain, hunger, thirst, just to mention a few. But Hosea, the prophet, prophesied about Israel. It says, Last I strip her naked and expose her, as in the day she was born, and make her like wilderness, and set her like dry land, and slay her with thirst. In different places in the Bible, it is mentioned that the people will suffer thirst because of their sins. But the same prophets who told about this also prophesied the good news about Jesus Christ. For example, Isaiah 32 says, A king of righteousness will be like stream of water in dry places. Isaiah 55, 1 says, Come everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. And there are so many more places in the Bible where you can see that Jesus has been foretold about the suffering he's going through, the thirst for, for our deliverance, and to bring us to God, to fill us with the life-giving water. All this was promised already before in the Bible. And who thirsts and who wants to drink from the living water, which is Jesus Christ? Remember, when Jesus went to the Jacob's well and met one Samaritan woman and he asked her for a drink, of that well, and he drank, but afterwards he told to this woman, like, quote, everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again, the water of the well, but whoever drinks of the water that I give will never be thirsty again, and the water that I give him will become in him a spring of water welling up to eternal life. It's written in John 4, 13 and 14. So God provided for us through his own son. He came down to earth to live like a human, to suffer like a human, to go through all the pain, but he did it in our behalf so that we don't have to go through. And he was the lamb, the lamb of God that was given for us as a sacrifice for our sins. In John 6.35 it says, Whoever believes in me shall never be thirsty. What a beautiful word, isn't it? It's meant for you and me, for all of us, because we all need this, this life-giving water that saves us, that redeems us, that brings us up to heaven to be eternally with God and never be thirsty again. So, brothers and sisters, be assured that Jesus provides for our thirst. He bared the thirst on the cross on our behalf and experienced the wrath of God 
in our place. But Jesus has risen from the dead and sits on the right hand side of God. And we can come to Jesus and receive the life giving water that brings us to eternal life. If you believe this, repent and come to Christ Jesus and your thirst will be satisfied with life-giving water. And the water that you receive shall overflow to others who are seeking, who are thirsty, and they will be redeemed of their sins. Jesus is the living water. Let us pray. Jesus, thank you, Lord. Thank you for your living water, for the life-giving water, O oh Lord Jesus, that you have put out for us, O oh Lord, for the thirst that you had, for the thirst that you had on the cross, for us to be redeemed, O oh Lord Jesus. Lord, thank you, Father. Lord, it is you that we are coming to, Lord.